Hi, this is Pastor Michelle Collins. I really pray that you are being blessed by our fast. Growing up as a PK, there are many things that you see happen in a church that turns into actions rather than things that are really your own conviction. Fasting is one of those things. I can remember growing up as a teenager, fasting happened every Saturday morning, including prayer, song, worship, and the Word. But after doing it so many times, it didn't really have the effect that it needed to because it was done so often and so without even the conviction of what was being done. And so I want to share something with you today as we continue our fast that I pray that it will help your fasting to become effective. Let's get into the word. Matthew chapter 3 verses 7 through 12 and it reads, but when he saw the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to watch him baptize, he denounced them. You brood of snakes, he exclaimed. Who warned you to flee the coming wrath? Prove by the way you live that you have repented of your sins and turned to God. Don't just say to each other, we're safe, for we are descendants of Abraham. That means nothing, for I tell you, God can create children of Abraham from these very stones. Even now, the ax of God's judgment is poised, ready to sever the roots of the trees. Yes, every tree that does not produce good fruit will be chopped down and thrown into the fire. I baptize with water those who repent of their sins and turn to God. But someone is coming soon who is greater than I am, so much greater that I'm not worthy even to be his slave and carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. He is ready to separate the chaff from the wheat with his winnowing fork. Then he will clean up the threshing area, gathering the wheat into his barn, but burning the chaff with never ending fire. What we must understand is the Pharisees and the Sadducees were religious leaders who were a part of the theological and social fabric of Israel. So it's not surprising that they would present themselves at a time when people were being baptized by John the Baptist. Why? John was preaching and prophesying about a new kingdom as well as a new covenant and the coming Messiah. And of course, they wanted to be a part of that as well. However, there's one element that John emphasized, and that was repentance. John knew that these two group of people only decided to be a part of the baptism just for show and not because they truly felt convicted. And so he rebuked them harshly because he understood that they would have to turn their hearts to serving God on his terms, not theirs. By the way, he might have singled them out in scripture that we just read, but it's a message that John preached to everyone, repent. As it relates to our current fasting, it's important to understand that this is not for show nor simply a calendared event. We do not fast because everyone is fasting. It's simply not enough to be connected and not convicted. Fasting is deeper and simply not the act of abstaining. It's the very act of repenting. We abstain in the physical, but we reconcile in the spiritual. The physical and the spiritual must be in place in order for fasting to be effective. So how do you incorporate repentance in your fasting? I'm glad you asked. Number one, self-examination. Number two, godly sorrow. Without these two things, it's impossible and God will not bless your fast. Could it be that you are not seeing any fruit or effectiveness in your fast because you forgot to incorporate these two elements? Selah. As we continue on this fast, we want to make sure that we do self-reflect and that we do incorporate repentance in order that God will bless our fast and so that we can experience the transformation that we need individually and collectively. God bless all of you and remember, we are in this together.